everyone, Jens at Organist here, and welcome to another episode of Orgocraft. I hope you guys are having a great day today. So, in the last episode, we built up a whole bunch of flower farms here in the little flower forest biome that I have found. And since the last episode, I did a thing. I went ahead and completely finished off the room where we have all of the flower farms. So we've got the one over here, and this does our tulips. And then over here, this gets us a, um, a, a fairly wide variety of flowers, as does this one over here. And as I was kind of playing around with this and, like, you know, making, like, little areas where the flowers were... I was like, you know, it would be nice to have a, uh, a farm where I actually spend some time making it look good. Because I think most of the farms that I have right now really are more of form than they are function. Is that right? Is that No. Other way around. S switch that. Reverse it. M more functional than they are something nice to look at. And I was like, you know, it would be kind of nice to, to play around with the design because I had already started with the backdrop in here. And so I decided to take a little bit of time and make this area pretty. Also, I added a too tall flower farm over here so that we can get those... And I have been stocking up on all of that. So this is what we have. We can turn all the farms on um, and and let them run. I haven't I haven't fully automated this. That's something that's going to come in the future. But yeah, I just wanted to to have a little bit of fun with this. Do some do some building, and I wanted to. Um, I, I originally had the idea of doing like a like a little garden with a fountain in the middle. And that didn't end up panning out, so I ended up taking the, the glazed terracotta, because I feel like some of this, some of it, some more than others, kind of looks like some flowers, and I don't have a lot of great use for this glazed terracotta, but I feel like these little splashes of color look really nice along with the quartz and the sea lantern, white concrete for the ceiling. And yeah, and then at each of the farms, we just have a little trap door that leads down to where all of our flowers are. And you can see I have been running the farms and getting some resources out of there. Plus then water elevators to get in and out. And then I have just this little bit of an access point right here so that if we you know, need to restock bone meal or if anything ever breaks, I can come back here. And just a little bit of storage, a little bit of the essentials. But then I also did up the wall there, so if you come and look through this door, you don't see that it's actually a mess back there. So, yeah, so just wanted to kind of show that off before we get on to the project of today. And, oh good, it's night. And there's a skeleton. Joy. Alright, uh, back to base. So the plan for today's episode is to start bringing villagers over here so that we can begin basically setting up our librarian trading hall. I've been wanting to get books for quite a while now, and having died a few times over the course of the various projects, I haven't lost my stuff yet, but you never know when that's going to happen. So I really want to start getting all of our librarians in here and getting these books done. Before we can do that, however, I want to finish the monorail. It's, it's, it's about... Mm, Oh, probably a little less than two-thirds of the way done because we took the long route coming through here. But I want to I want to finish this up so that we can basically have a, a, a shorter trip to bring the villagers back. Um, but as you can see, I haven't even built the station here. Um, so we need to do that. We need to get it back and then um, make a, a, a temporary little way to grab our villagers and bring them over here and get them installed in the base. So that is what we are going to do first. I'm going to do this in the form of a time lapse, and this is going to be my streaming project for the week. So enjoy the time lapse.
Three days and far too many hours later, the monorail is just about done. All of the pillars are in now. I've gone through and done all of the details, including all of the end rods along here. And we are pretty much good to go. Now, I still need to build the station over at the base, but that's something we'll do a little bit later. I need a break from monorail. So let's get into what we are planning on working on for this episode, which is villagers. And apparently I need a little more power there. Okay. So I have the temporary rail line set up. I also see that it is about to be nighttime. So let's go take a snooze, or maybe not, watch the sunset, take a snooze. It's been a while since I've spent any kind of time in the village. And yeah, it's nice nice to come back here. We still have some work to do on the f far side of the village. So he's watching the sunset from a tree. Bet he can't get down from there. Oh well. <laughs> Villagers, right? Right. That's what we're about to be working with. Okay. Well, you have fun up there. So, let us go down here. I need to power these rails. There we go. Okay. And I need to put that there so that I can change the direction. All right, so this is my Mending Villager. I'm not sure if I have shown this. Well, I know I've shown it before, um, but I've made some modifications. We have a lot of villagers in here, which is good because we need a lot. So this is my Mending Villager. He's actually a double mending. So the, his first trade came up at, I think it was 30. And then we got him down to 10. And then his second trade is Mending. And then over here... This is my uh, zombie friend. Do you have a name? Oh, you don't have a name. No, but you have a diamond sword, which means you're not going anywhere. So, right. He stays in there. So this is our mending villager. He has been traded with, so his trades are locked in. And I just realized that there is something that I forgot to do over at the base. I need to take away all the lecterns so that I can control which workstation he chooses when he gets over there. Uh, let me go do that real quick. 16, 17, 18. Okay, those are all done. I also need to put some rails in place so that I can bring the villagers to their new homes. I'm also going to need minecarts, so let's take that one. Actually, I need minecart. Oh, he's in a minecart. Never mind. Oh, well. Somewhere down in the storage system, I have rails. I would have to put a torch in the worst place possible. Put it there, and then we can put that there. There we go, and we're going to go ahead and break the carpet there. Yeah, I think we'll take that all the way in so that we have a chance to put the lectern down and get him in there. All right, let's go get a villager. All right, so our friend here is ready to go. We will need to follow him over there, but if I do that, that should send him on the right path, and then we can power this rail, and off you go. Goes. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. You're not moving very fast. Uh-oh. He's stuck. Why is he stuck? Oh, what have I done? Did I miss a block? No, apparently I didn't power this the whole way. Okay. Oh, this is going to be bad. Um... We... Because as soon as I turn that on, he's going to go downhill. Um, do I have blocks? Yes. Okay, so let's take out that. And then we'll 
do this. There we go. Okay, and then we can just do that and that. And then we will power that. Uh, seriously? Seriously? There he goes. Ooh. And here he comes. And in place he be. Alright, so let's go ahead and break these rails. And then we're going to put his new workstation down. Right there. Replace the carpet. Maybe we will replace the carpet. Alright, and then... Making sure we hit that and not his. There we go! And then... I... Why? Oh, because there's a trapdoor. He can't get out. Can't... I can't get in. Okay. Minecart retrieved. Villager in place. There you go. Welcome to your new home. Alright, I need emeralds. I need books, because I need to be able to lock in their trades. Yeah, I need a lot of stuff. So let me get a few more things together, and then we can start getting our villagers. Alright, so we are back here. Let's grab another villager who is stuck. Alright, let's push you over there. And what you got for us? Nothing. Alright, so we can break that. And then we shall just wait for him to reset. Hopefully. Okay, lose the trade. This is what will take forever. While we are waiting for him to revert, it... He should be in time where he will lose profession. Um, yes, so I'm going to put on screen a list of all of the enchantments I want to get from these villagers. And basically, we're just going to work our way through till we have all of them. So, yeah, I don't know why this guy is not losing his trade. I didn't trade with him. And I don't think... There, I think when I was trying to get my Mending Villager, I think I got rid of all the workstations in the townhomes up here so that they wouldn't pick up any others. Well, that is there, but he didn't change to be a Fletcher. Let's see, is there anything? Yeah, there is a cartography table there, but door? Let's see. No, you haven't lost it? All right, what if I put this down and then break it again? How about that? No? Alright. I don't think they changed this mechanic in 115. Because I'm pretty sure that I got... Um... The Mendelssohn... The, the, the Mendelssohn. Ah, there... Oh... Okay. Well, clearly we need to go clean up the rest of the workstation since he decided he wanted to be a fisherman. Where? I don't even know where a barrel is. All right, well, let me get the stations cleared up. And yeah, I'll bring you back in a second. So I removed all of the workstations that I could find in close proximity, and he would not turn uh, back into a professionless villager, so I let him go. Now, and it turns out he was actually a Fletcher, so he had picked up that Fletching table, but I'm pretty sure that I just saw that he became a fisherman. I've also, yeah, yeah, now he came over here, and now he's decided he's going to be a fisherman. So, I don't know what was going on. So I just set him free, repopulate, pulled out a new villager, 
plop down the lectern, and the first thing we get is looting three. So that is fantastic. I am going to trade with him, lock in that trade, and off he goes. So I have got some work to do to get um, all the villagers that we need. This is going to be a long process, so I will see you with an update in a little bit. The bottom half of the villager trading hall is complete. I just saw from my clock on the wall that it is nighttime. And I'm, of course, I'm running my zero tick farms, so I apologize for the noise. Um, because they are going to break in the next major update, so I'm going to make good use of them now. So, what we have here, we have our mending villager. We have... Uh, looting. We also have fire protection, which I'm not officially counting. So there is looting. This is our infinity for our bow. Here we have sweeping edge and nothing else useful. This one is aqua affinity for our helmets. Power four. I've not been able to get a power five. So I got two power four and we can combine them into power five. And then over here we have fortune three piercing, which I don't really need. We've got an efficiency five and a silk touch. So we're making good progress. I realized the first few came really, really easily. And then of course I realized you're, you have fewer and fewer options as you go through as, as this starts to fill up, but we're doing all right. This hasn't been too bad. I, um, when I put the villagers in, I discovered that they couldn't pathfind over the carpet because it was only a two-block space. So I had to remove the carpet there. Not sure if I'm going to leave these um, sea lanterns here or uh, just replace it with a, a normal block. I think there's probably enough light in there as it is. So we'll just have to see for now. The other thing that I did is I went and took a whole bunch of shulker boxes and dyed them brown and then hung them from the ceiling. I wanted some kind of storage in this area so that we would be able to to keep their book trades to be able to easily access. And I thought this was a nice touch. They, they blend in fairly well with the background, but they're nice storage. And then you don't have to fuss with chests, which, you know, come in one color and or um, barrels which could potentially mess with their um, their their trades. I didn't think it would because I trade with all of them before I bring them over here, but I didn't I didn't want to even fuss with there being another workstation that they might try to pick up. So yeah, so um, I've done some trading more with some than with others. One of the nice things that I found too was that they all many of them have an ink trade. So I went and filled this shulker box up with ink and have been trading with them every chance that I get. I'm going to need to go back to the squid farm and get some more ink from them. But yeah, it's been, it, that's been a great way to make emeralds. Um, so yeah, so that's the first half done. So now we need to go up to the top. I need to get my... Um, rails set up so that I can bring them all up here and we will start that process and we'll see if we can't get all the rest of our trade so I will bring you guys back when we have finished the librarian portion of our villager trading hall is complete I have managed to acquire every enchantment enchanted book that I set out to get some of them are not the greatest I had to go with a fire protection three instead of four uh, there was another one I forget who it was that only had two feather falling two um, but after a little uh, run in with a zombie here lowered his price to four so that's not too bad so 16 diamonds for feather falling four it's pretty good. Um, for the as far as the the shulker boxes, I went and put them up here. For now, that may change because um, I'm not I'm not completely sure what the top of this is going to look like once once we get done with it. But for now, yeah, that is done. So what I want to do next is just kind of go along and um and get this room finished so what i'm kind of thinking is we talked about um this is kind of like a you know like a medieval cathedral type thing so i think what i want to do i don't want to go too fancy with it but i kind of want to take like this stone brick that we have here and kind of do like a little bit of a vaulted ceiling um 
a little bit of an arch, maybe some chandeliers. Nothing, nothing too um, ridiculously crazy. But I think that's what we're gonna do to top this off, and then we can we can do something nice for up there. And I don't know if we'll keep the the ladder here, or maybe do some kind of staircase. But yeah, so that is everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and take down my temporary um, coconut coconut cocoa bean farm because I needed the brown dye for the shelker boxes so that they would fit in. So let me go ahead and I need to get all of the extra railway cleaned up and get some materials and then we will come back and start doing some building. I am an idiot. I cleared all the rails over here. I completely took down the little temporary rail line into the base over there. And as I was ripping the rails out of here, I was like, oh yeah, I'm taking more villagers over to the base. Other professions and things. Facepalm. Alright, so I want to start from here. And we go at a little bit of an angle here, so we might have to make some adjustments in how the roof goes as we go along. But I'm going to start over here, and we'll work from there. So let's maybe start here. And we don't have a ton of room above us, but let's go up two blocks. And then from there, we'll start to go... In, and we can just kind of do at an angle like that. And then where are my half slabs? Let's do that. And let's maybe go one, two. And then we can go there. And then we'll do another one, two. And then let's go one more. Oh, and I'm right at the ceiling, so that is perfect. And then we can bring it across from there. So, let's see. So, how many did we go from the very first one? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Whoops. I've fallen in a hole. Alright, so there's that. And then... Let's go to the other side. And we'll just put that there temporarily. Okay, and then we're building off of here. So we're going there, and we're going to do two... did that, and I think we went two from here. One, two. That's probably going to need to go. And then another there. Um, one, two, and we're a whole block's different, so we'll go ahead and pull all of that down. And then maybe what we could do is, rather than a stair there, we could just go with a slab that comes across. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I was just say it doesn't look <laughs> it doesn't look even, but that's just because there's an extra one up there. Yeah, I think I think that will work. So let me get this built out a little bit, and I'll have to play around with the angles as we get to the back. But let me see what I can come up with. Welcome back, everyone. So here is what I have done. So we've got the ceiling all up along here, and then it just kind of tapers towards the back of the trading hall. And obviously, we still have a ways to go because we have this over here. So I'm not sure quite how that's going to continue to pan out. But this is what we've got so far. The lighting is going to change. I was just doing this temporarily to make sure that nothing would spawn. But then as we come in through here, we see the wall just kind of comes in over here. It's not symmetrical if we go and look at it up top. 
you will see um, that, yeah, it's definitely not symmetrical, but I think that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. What I am not completely satisfied with is what we have going on as far as the tops go here. So I think what I want to do is try to essentially replicate what we had down below. So put another layer on top, and then we can have our um, shulker boxes coming down like we did over there. And I think that that will be good. But I'm running a little short on time, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that today because I do have one more thing I want to do in this episode. But I think it will I think it'll look because I really like how this looks here. So I think that's what we're gonna do above. And then I want to do like some chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Um, yeah. But then I also extended our minecart rail a little bit so now we get into our smelting room and then as you can see we have we've got the black wall here i think i might want to put another black concrete up there there we go because i don't want you to be able to see so you come in here this chest will go away eventually and then as you come around then we make the transition to the stone and you enter the hall we have the um the enchanting setup here and yeah and then all of our villagers so i am happy with how this is coming along obviously we've still got some work to do but yeah this project is is moving well along and we now have all of the books we could ever possibly want so that is good the last thing that I want to do in this episode is get our final minecart station built up. And so let me go and get the materials. We're going to keep basically the same block palette as we have for the base. So quartz, uh, the cyan terracotta, and probably a little bit of blue concrete as an accent. So let me go get those materials together and we will build that last station so that we can call the monorail complete. So here we have our base station for the monorail. I think it is looking really, really nice. I did a mixture of both the smooth quartz and the regular quartz. So on top we have kind of this tiled look here, but then for all of the stairs on the side I did the smooth quartz. And I think it's I think it's nice to kind of break up the texture like that. And then all the rest is just the normal quartz blocks with that little bit of blue concrete as a highlight in there. So we are just about done, but I want to get through the... Um, the mechanism that allows us to activate everything here. So I'm going to take a few blocks out of here first. Let's go ahead. I don't know if I needed to take that one or not, but we will see. And do I have... Okay, I do have a slab there. Excellent. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, put in our activator rail... So we're going to put that there, and then we're going to put our activator rail down, and that will then pop us out once we come into the station, which is what we need. Then we need a way to be able to power everything up. So what we're going to do is really, really simple here. We're going to put a repeater into this block, and then we're going to come down here, and we are going to take a sticky piston and we're going to put it here facing this way redstone block into there and then we will just fill that in on top put everything back in place and then i believe it's right here we're going to stick a button and it needs to be a wooden button so that we have a long enough pulse to actually get out of here but so we come in we get popped out here our minecart stops right here we come back over we click ourselves in we hit this powers up the rails long enough for us to get launched out of the station and we are good to go so that i think is just about everything we have made a ton of progress in this episode we got our villager trading hall all done we've got our monorail finally done and I'm very excited for all of that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode today. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe. And make sure you click that little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. 
Be sure to follow me on social media. All those links are down in the description and hope to see you Wednesday at 9.30 Eastern for our live stream. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.